Good morning. You ever have that feeling that you forgot to unplug the coffee pot? God, I gotta get a haircut. Yeah, I got that feeling right now. Coffee pot's on, by the way. Good morning. Um, Cindy, good morning. Working and listening. Not don't 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 make me the person that stops you from making those monies. Gail, good morning. Kingsbury Craft, she's right here. Mashid, hello, good morning. Listen, we got a lot to cover today. Um, and of course, you know me, I don't want to take up your whole day. So let's get right into it. We are going to do uh, team names. Team names. This is a feature in Wilcom's software that allows you to build a database that will automatically feed to your machine one name after another. So instead of creating 50 files, you create one file and that one file has all 50 names. Good morning, Jesse. Just talking about team names here and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, I've only used this feature a couple of times and I've always had mixed results, but in the last, in the last three days, just preparing for this class, I got it. I got it. In fact, um, I know that if you don't use it all the time, you know, that whole don't use it, lose it mantra. Yeah. Um, uh, I know that that's a real, a real situation. So after we're all done, I am going to type up a step-by-step -step on how to do this. And I will link it on, um, on the YouTube in the, you know, that whole message comment area below. So let's get to it. One of the things when you're doing team names, that you are going to find very helpful is asking your customers to provide you a typed list. Let me open up another window here. All right. Um, a typed list. They can, the spreadsheet works best. And you know, if you don't have Excel or any other spreadsheet uh, uh, software, Gmail has spreadsheet functions. Um, try and figure out how I can show that to you. Let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, don't laugh. This is my email. But if you go into your email, you can swipe down these icons and Gmail has something called Sheets, which is a spreadsheet. Okay, so here's what I want you to, to um, communicate to your customers. Tell them to create a spreadsheet that includes whatever information you need. You need um, name, correct? I'm gonna in, enlarge this for you. Let's see, do, do, do. there we are. Okay, we need names. Maybe you want to know, good morning, Frank. Good afternoon, Frank. Um, we're diving right in because we've got a lot to cover. I want you to encourage your customers to provide you with a spreadsheet of the information you need. Maybe they're ordering multiple colors. So you want uh, colors. You want to know what sizes. Is this order being shipped? Gusta, good morning. We're just driving right in, Gusta. Um, spreadsheet to create the list of names. Now, of course, you can do this yourself, 
but you know if you have the if you have your customer do it and provide you with this detail you don't have to worry about making a mistake in the spelling you know names they come across with um, all kinds of spellings these days but maybe they want you to also uh, ship to different areas. You want to drop ship to different areas. So maybe you want to sort by zip code. All right. So those are your columns. That's what you want to put on on your um, your spreadsheet on this particular situation. So who do we have? We have Bob, Betty. Oops, see candy. And oh, here we know what we can do. Cindy, Jesse, Gail. Did I spell that right, Gail? Frank and Gustav. Now we're going to do the whole Barbie thing here. Blue shirt, pink shirt, pink. Thanks, Gail. Pink, 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 blue, blue. Now, don't be offended. I'm just going to pop sizes in here. It's no reflection on you individually. Medium, small said small, uh, extra large, another large, another medium, uh, another, don't yell at me, Frank, extra large, and uh, small. Okay. Oh, zip codes. Zip code one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, one, two, one, five. I'm just typing in numbers now. In the United States, we all know the zip codes have a total of um, five numbers, uh, but we're just playing here. So, okay. So now your customer has provided you with this list. Okay. So they have provided you with this list. Now, now that you have the list, you're going to determine how you want it sorted. Ooh, that was a bit much. How do you want it sorted? Well, we want to sort. Frank is a medium from his photos. Oh, look, Goosey uses it to print um, print stickers. What does he say here? I do and use it to print label stickers on individual bags for shirts. That was the thing that got me the or Oh, y'all, you go. Okay, so we're going to sort this. We know that we have... Um, multiple zip codes and maybe some of these should be the same yeah. let's see oops let's make these two the same and these two the same and we do this because we want to sort all of those going to the same region in the same stack and then the next sort we want to sort for that particular region, the colors that are going to that region. And then we're going to sort by size. And then we're going to sort by name. And you'll see why this is important here in just a little bit. So we're going to select all of our items. We're going to go to the sort feature. And we are first going to sort by zip code. Then we're going to sort by colors. Then we're going to sort by size. 
we can sort by name too, but you know, honestly, that's going to be kind of irrelevant. We're, it, it's going to happen, but we want to get these three items sorted. So we're going to sort, sort. Now, you see Bob here, who's in zip code 1234, wears a blue shirt. And then we have Cindy, again, no reflection on, on anybody personally. Now, Betty and Candy both live in the 4567 zone. So we have a medium. We know that they're both pink. And we have a medium and a small size for them. So when we do our prep work for stitching all of this out, that's how we're going to lay this out. We're going to lay out everything for one, two, three, four. Then we're going to lay out everything for one, six, eight, eight, zero. Then we're going to lay out the two. Good morning, Barb. The two shirts we're going to need for four, five, six, seven. And we're going to lay those in order of their size, medium, small, as listed in our spreadsheet. Okay, so now that we've got that, what are we going to do with this list? Well, we need to save this list as a CSV file, which will automatically put commas instead of the columns. The C, our, our Wilcom software isn't going to read the individual columns. It is going to create individual columns, but it doesn't know how to read the individual columns. So what we do or what the software does is it needs a comma in between to show where the break is. So now that we have this, I am going to select my items. Frankie, did you did you open up an oh an, another window? Have I got you in here twice? So should I put your name down twice? Yeah. So we're gonna select all our items now that it's all been sorted, and we're gonna do a save as feature. Save as. And up here, we're not gonna save it as a workbook. We're going to search the save items, and I know you can't see this, but you want to look for CSV, comma, delimited. And again, I'm going to put all of this on paper, and I'm going to make it available. So, save as, comma, delimited. Uh, what do we want to call it? We're going to call it names and then we're going to save it i'm going to save it in a special place i'm going to save it where am i going to save it i'm going to save it in my um copy and conversation episode file all right so there it is save save all right so we're done with the spreadsheet close that out now to get this information into your software, you first need to open your team name icon. Now, whether you have the advanced feature or the standard feature, we can do this. There is a team name icon. Click on that. Open it. All right. Now we need to manage the team names. That's this uh, little icon in here. It looks like two guys holding up the sun. I, I don't know what the sun represents, um, but that's what it says, manage team name. So we click on that. We are going to add a team name file. We're going to call it uh, CNC team. Okay. Now, how do we get all of those names, all of our columns and everything in there? Okay. Go to your, in another folder. Another folder. I suppose I should do that down here so you can see it. Go to another folder. Go to the location where you have your team names. Where you, where you saved your file. Do, do, do. Today is the night. 
There we are. And you're going to click on it, but you're not going to open it here. You're going to right click, open with. You don't want to just open it in the spreadsheet. You want to open with notepad. And this is very important because if you open it with the spreadsheet, it just gives you back those columns. You don't want the columns. You want the list with the commas. And that's going to be seen in Notepad. And opening. Oh, I did a silly thing, didn't I? Yeah. Um, I had all those columns. I didn't start at the A1 position. So we're going to need to do a little minor editing. Sorry about that. A <laughs> medium-sized prank. Cindy, you're so funny. All right, we're going to get rid of this one. We're going to get rid of these. And get rid of those. Sorry about this, everybody. Oops. Can I undo? Oh, my goodness. I can't undo. All right. Don't say. We're going to cheat. We're going to use one of my practice pieces. Barb, what have you got here? Barb loves the advanced team name element. She sets up individual youth leagues and have used the for company names, logos, departments, save so much time. It does. And in my world, when a client comes to me and says, I have 50 names, my fee, because not everybody knows how to, you know, just create a, a text file, my fee for a simple name is five dollars so if you have 50 names that's 250 dollars but if you provide me with the spreadsheet with your list of 50 names that's just my standard fee okay so we're gonna cheat here we're going to we're gonna open a team name that i've already used i've been practicing remember so we're gonna open with notepad <gasps> there we go Sorry, guys, you're kind of out of the mix now. And we no longer have all of our um, our, our uh, zip code sort. So you have your team names. You're going to open them up in Notepad. You're going to see your columns separated by a comma. You're going to copy, right? Copy. And then okay, why did it not do that? You're supposed to be able to do your quick names here. Let's see if we just need to start over with this. Quick names. So you do your copy, you come back. Oh, I like that, Cindy. She's an extra small. <laughs> I told you I was playing around. And here, you open up your quick names, and you can paste, and your list is right there. Ta-da! You hit OK, and look. It's all right here. Yep. Now, now that you've got your names listed, you need to put them into the software. You need to add them. I'm sorry, Frank. Frank. Oh, wait. Frank, you haven't been deleted. Let's see here. We can add Frank, who's getting a blue shirt and is a medium. Look at that. We have a last minute addition. Easy enough to do. Just add another name. Yep. Now, we're going to select all, and the easiest way to do that is with this double arrow. Go click. Boom, there they are. And when we click OK, one more thing, name order. There are three columns here. It is like magic. There are three columns here, but we don't want to show the size and the color 
That's our information. That's not information we're going to use. We're going to stitch on the shirt. So we're going to have to get rid of two of these columns. Now, it took me forever to figure this out because, you know, I can be slow sometimes. But if you don't see where you can delete your columns, look at here. There's a slider down here. Yeah. Slide it. Oh, look, plus and minus. If I need to add a column, I hit the plus. But, of course, we just want one column, so we're going to subtract columns until all we have is the first column. Now we say OK, and our display only shows one column, and we say OK. And when we, um, when we OK our list into the names, into the team names, it comes up in a wire format. You can select one. And just get a look on how they all look. Now, before we, oh, and if you need to select them all again, here, just hit your baseline. Yep, it picked them all up. Now, before we do this, we need to make some edits. We need to check our densities. We need to check our, um, our underlay. We need to check our color selection, the font style. So we go to Object Properties, and we're doing this in the team names because we want to affect all of them. So we go to Object Properties, Object Properties. Oh, it's open already. <laughs> okay, so right now it's in a block font. And I just changed it. Okay. Right now it's showing a green colorway. I just changed it to all blue. Right now it's showing that these are going to stitch into Tommy. I don't want them to stitch into Tommy. I want them to stitch in satin. So I just changed them all to satin. Now I want to go to underlay. Yeah. These are names for, um, you know, narrow columns. So we're going to select uh, the center run. Like I said, here is where you are going to make all of your item adjustments. Now, wait a minute. We want, we selected a blue lettering for all of these, right? Um, let's see. We want the girls, we're going to just select the girls to be pink. All right. Now, how do we know that that took? How do we know that it's all there? Unhide all and so use. There we are. Oh, my goodness, I did it again. I know there's an automatic hide function here, and I don't quite have control of it yet. So, so now that we've got our, our functions set up and we've got um, our settings and our densities and all of that, we need to generate the, um, the stitches. Remember, right now we're just in a wireframe. We need to create the actual stitches. And we can do this one of two ways. If we go up here to the stitch, there's a generate stitches. We can also simply press the G on our keyboard. That's a shortcut key. Press the G. Oh, Jeff's the only one that was selected here. Let's see. And G. There we go. Now, if we run through the list again, we can see blues and pinks, blues and pinks, blues and pinks. Yep, you got it. Pink to make the voice. Oh, that's so cute, Frank. Oh. 
Frank says pink to make the boys wink. And thank you, Cindy. I, you know, she wants to um she wants to know that she wants us to know that she's glad that there's a, a professional digitizer teaching Wilcom. Listen, no professional with Wilcom. I just play at it until I get it. So yeah, let's make some boys wink. Um okay, so we have all of our names here. And we're not, this is everything we want. We know it's all sorted the way we want it. Let's unhide all again. Remember, I got that whole auto hide thing that I'm not quite sure, not quite a master of. And what it does is it stacks them all exactly where we want them. Um, and now the idea is that it's going to stitch one after the other, right? Does it? Mm. To highlight all the blues, Cindy wants to know. Cindy wants to know if I wanted to highlight all the blues, how would I do that? Well, just like any other um, color sort in Wilcom, you would go to Edit, Select by Color, click Blue. And OK, and it will highlight all the blues. Oh, here. Listen, since we have them all highlighted, let's give the boys more masculine. Is that, is that, that's probably politically incorrect these days. My apologies. Let's give them a different lettering style. Let's give them... Do, do, do. Yeah, the old college. Yeah. All right. So, and we can change individual fonts. We can change, you know, maybe Cindy and Barb want, oh, Cindy, how did you get blue? Cindy, you're supposed to be a pink. And you're not supposed to be college. You're supposed to be book script. Oh, look how easy that was. So who we got here? We have Barb and Cindy, Matthew, Justin, Jan, and Frank. All right, so they're all there. Okay, now we are now going to unhide all again. Unhide all. Now we're going to save this. We are going to export it to, yeah, I know. And you know, Cindy, in this I found this was not this was not uh, in in the manual. Yes, it's in there, but it wasn't highlighted, so I didn't catch it. I found this. Um, so now we're going to export our our file to a machine format. Doesn't matter what machine format, DST, PES, VIP, whatever your machine uses. And we got some more tricks here that um, were not readily available in the general search. All right. So export to a machine file. Whatever name you want to call it. We're going to, we're going to dis you know, we're going to do it in DST because, you know, that's my default. But before we hit the save button, I want you to go over here and hit the options button. And under the options button, I want you to go to team names because that's what we're working with. And there are some options here. In the past, there's a function that I want to do in just a few minutes that um, I couldn't get to work. And the reason I couldn't get it to work was because I did not know to look in the options to change the settings. The first one says design and team names with stops. What that means is it will stitch the design, it will stitch the name, it will stop. The next one will stitch the name. And then it will stitch the name. And then it will stitch. The, the design's already been done. One and done. We don't want that. We want the design. 
and you're going to see this later, to stitch on every shirt, unless that is what you want, just the one and done, to stitch on every shirt with every name. But that's later. Right now, we want team names only with stops. And we're going to select where we want the start position. I always just leave it in center, center. Say OK. Click Save. And it pops up a box to confirm that this is what you want. You want to stitch a name and have it automatically stop. And it's just wanting to confirm, yes, is that what you want? Yes, that is what you want. I want to go back a second. It's a little harder to do, but you can, this whole setup is designed for a single head machine, one shirt right after the other, or one garment right after the other. But you can set it up for a multi-head. It's a little trickier. What it does um, is it will uh, first stitch all of the designs on every head, and then it will stop, and you will turn off all of the heads but the first one, and it will stitch that name. Then you'll turn off the first one, turn on the second one, leave everything else off. It will stitch the second name. And you, one at a time, down your line of machine heads to stitch out to that whole list. I think that can get confusing. But, of course, you know, if you're a master at your multi-head machine, then this probably isn't going to be an issue for you. But for me, um, I would just do, it does. Cindy wants to know if this means that it will stop so you can load the next hoop shirt. And that's exactly what Team Names does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're running late. I knew this was going to be a longer one. Sorry, everybody. So, yes. And how do you know that's going to work? We just created our, our DST file, right? Let's go and do a print preview, which is our production sheet. And it's telling us that it's going to start with blue and then pink and then blue and then pink. So, yes, you need to set up your, your hoop, your color sort. And now let's go to the next page. Previous page. Oh, it's probably because of the colors. Yeah, this is not what I expected to see. No, look. Let's see what happens with the next page. There it is. Okay. So, um, and it's because we have the, the different fonts of the different colors. Let me go back. So the first page is going to give you your, your size, your placement lines, your color sort. And then it's telling you what is stitching where. Anthony. Anthony's got a complete instruction here. regarding the um, multi-head machine. Okay, Anthony, I'm going to include that. If you don't mind, I'm going to include that in my uh, printout um, to assist with those that are using uh, multi-head machines. So, okay, first page of our preview is your standard page that shows your color sort and your um, layout. The next page or pages shows what stitching when until we get to the end of that. And then this last page shows our sort. We want to set up a blue shirt 2x. That neat detail is right here. We then need a blue shirt and a large. So when you're setting up your stitch out, 
you're going to lay out your blue shirt 2x and then a blue shirt x uh, large you need a blue shirt small the next is a blue shirt extra large blue shirt extra small you're going to sort your shirts as it's written on this last page and you're going to sort it in order of how it's going to stitch one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right and the machine will stop after jeff has stitched so that you can load susan so that you can load charlie so that you can load barb one after another It's a default in there, Barb. If you want, I can show you where it is, but I'm, you know, I'm sure you've got it. Um, it's just a matter of, of remembering. Um, so, anyways, you're going to lay out your shirt so that when you're you're going to hoop Jeff's shirt first and load that, and then when it stops, you're going to load the shirt for Susan and etc. Until you get through all of them. Um, Ta-da! That's team names. Now, wait a minute. There's one other, there's one other big portion to this. Okay. What if what if your company, your your customer has a logo they want stitched and the name underneath? All right, how do you do that? Now you can create the logo brand new. Um, let's go ahead and close this so we got a little more room here. You can create a brand new logo like you would any other digitizing. Or if this is a logo that they've already used. Thank you, Anthony. I'm going to copy and paste all of this um, so I can put it in the, the printout that I'm going to make. Or you can bring in a logo that's already done. And for our purposes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, here. Ta-da! Yeah. We're going to get rid of some of these. Okay. So now, how do we add team names? We want we want to put a name right under, correct? So we need to create a template, a template that's going to include our design, a template that's going to include the positioning of the name. I'm trying to think how we can do this with. So we create our template. We create our first name name one we create it and we place it now while we're here we can change the color we can do all of our edits we can change the lettering Change the sizes. Remember, this is a template. All right. All of our names are going to go right here. Anthony, you're getting ahead of me. Let me do this. Uh, uh, only be a few more minutes, I promise. Um, if you want, you can put something up on top. Uh, or even here. City. Okay. So. 
So here we are. Again, we're going to make our underlay the center. We're going to make all of our changes, all of our adjustments. Then we're going to select all of the elements. We're going to go to File, and we're going to Save as Team Name Template Design. And then it's going to uh, pop up here. We're going to save it as an EMB file because we may want to make changes at a future date. All right. And we are going to go to team names. We need to get our design file back, right? Go to team names. And this tab right here is where all of those designs are located. And there's our design right there. So we're going to enter that. And look, our, um, our name drop function is now in a wire format. So we go back to our team name list. We go back to manage. We're going to create a new list. And we're going to do this just real short. Um, uh, what do we want to call this? How about just design? And then I don't know why it won't let me go in there. Okay, that's fine. Design, add. John in Rockford. Okay, that's the only name we're going to put in there. We're going to make sure we've got our list created. We're going to move everything over. And we're going to okay. Now, yeah, we're going to edit this. Because we don't need the three columns. And OK, there we are. OK, um, that did not work quite right. Oh, we have two baselines. Go back to Manage, Baseline 1. Do, do, do. Does not have two names. And baseline two. Where did baseline two go? Okay, name three, cancel, edit. I know I'm stumbling here. I see, Anthony, thank you. Like I said, I've been playing with this for the last couple of days. There we go. Now, okay. There it is. All right. So, and just like working with the names before, I can go in and select, um, I don't need two Johns. There we go. I can select, um, and change the fonts, I can change the colors, I can change everything, and then I can generate my stitches 
and there we are. Oh my God, I hate that. So sorry. Oh, oh, okay. So, and again, when you save it, when you save it, you want to export it. You want to go to options. You want to go to team names. And you want to make sure, especially if this design is supposed to stitch on everything, you want to make sure that repeated design and team names with stops. You want to make sure that that's your selection. In fact, um, I would suggest that you always use this selection, whether you have a design or not. It doesn't care. It doesn't care whether you have a design or not. But it does care if you have a design and you don't select it, it will only print one design. And then press OK. And then save. And again, it's double checking. Are you sure this is what you want to do? You say yes. Go to your print preview. There's the first page. Second page has your um, elements. And then it's telling you um, what's going to print on that first shirt. Alrighty. Okay. Anthony, thank you very, very much. I'm like I said, I'm going to use your um, I'm going to use your notes here to add to my own. I know this was a lot. We've been at this for, um, it'll be an hour. Sorry. I try not to be so long. Next week, I do have a thought for next week. Um, oh my gosh. Yes, Cindy, you are so right. Just like with any other design file, you need to be aware of what the total overall stitch out size is going to be. So you use the appropriate hoop. Because, you know, you don't want to try to put, uh, a five-inch file in a four-inch hoop doesn't work. I have an idea for um, for next week. Uh, I want to talk to you about stabilizers. What to use, when to use, how to use, where to use, what to use. Um, unless you got something else you want to talk about, just let me know. And I think that's it. Um, oh, I should ask, do you have any questions regarding team names and how it works? Thank you, Jesse. Anthony, thank you very much. Oh, that's right. Cindy wants to remind everybody that Impressions Fort Worth is next weekend. Gosh, I wish I had that in my budget this year. Thank you, Barb. Barb wants to say that this was great information. It is. Um, team names is an awesome function. It's it's awesome. Oh. One more quick thing. If you don't have, if your software does not have a team name function, like what we have here today, how can you do that? Copy and paste and repeat. Um, then you have to be aware of those. Your machine may not be able to handle all the stitches. But if I do a copy and paste and paste and paste and paste. And I set my machine up so that after the last stitch. After the last stitch. Um. Really, I'm surprised you're here. Sorry, I got the I got um oh sidetracked. Anyways, set up your first one and then copy and paste so it lands exactly in the same place. And then you can go in and every place that there's a name, 
change that name to what you want. Okay. Um, and then set your machine up so that it will stop after it stitches the name. That will allow the machine to stop for you to pull out the shirt and put in the new one. Uh, and it will, again, it will repeat everything, stack after stack after stack, exactly in the same place if you don't have a name, a team name function in your software. So um, I know that was kind of quick. Um, if you have any questions, just ask. I'll be here. And um, I'm going to say goodbye now. You all have a great weekend. suppose it helps if I go like so. Oops, that's not it. There it is. Fun. Wasn't that fun? Do you have more questions? Do you want to learn something new? Join me at quicktostitch.com for coffee and conversation, and we'll talk about it. Embroidery machines, designs, and business. Hope to see you soon. Bye now.